I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, September the 26th, brought to you in part by Bovalis Vision. Bovalis Vision vaccines give cattle strong protection against clostridial disease, powered by the proprietary spur adjuvant that boosts vaccine performance while causing fewer reactions and redu reducing stress on cattle post vaccination. Plus, each time you buy a bottle of it, you're entered into a monthly drawing to win a fancy cowboy hat from Greeley Hat Works. For more information, go to powered-by-spur.com. Also, Beaver County Stockyards, 3,500 head, was talking with Lane Conkle, and he said the fall run has begun. Uh, I said it was cool out on Monday evening there while they were sorting up the cattle and getting them put away. Uh, Going to have 12 to 1500 calves, most of them weighing 4 to 600 pounds for the regular Tuesday cattle auction. Very few of them going to be weaned, but the quality will be outstanding. About 1400 head of yearlings, uh, a lot of them in loads, probably 11 loads at least of 8 and 9 weight steers there. Uh, going to be a couple loads of seven to eight weight heifers and then one load of fancy program heifers IMI global certified all natural NHTC 750 pound feeder heifers guys and they're fancy so if you're interested in something like that get on to dvauction.com get approved and get ready to bid on those cattle at Beaver County Stockyards Got a pretty good run of cows, five or six hundred head of cows. Uh, Going to be uh, around 50 head of, uh, of at least second or to third stage uh, bred cows, and they'll be fairly young and middle aged. Uh, and then there's going and most of those will be black. Uh, then there's going to be a, a lot of older bred cows. If that's something that you're interested in getting to, you just have to knock the pack of buyers off of them. And a lot of feeding type cows. If you guys are interested in that. But uh, check out Beaver County Stockyards on dvauction.com uh, and their cattle auction starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Get on there, get approved to bid, view and bid that sale in Beaver, Oklahoma. Farmers are busy and uh, I don't care where they're at. Northern Plains, Midwest, uh, each side of the Corn Belt, down in the Southern Plains. Uh, up north, uh, they're still finishing up a harvest, uh, finishing up corn harvest, for sure finishing up bean harvest. They're busy with that. Uh, those that have most of their corn put up are busy drying the corn. Uh, a lot of guys uh, are still putting up silage, although most of the silage has already been putting up, uh, putting bags or putting pits and packed and, and uh, covered up and ready to go. But uh, down the southern plains are busy planting wheat. And so what does that tell you? If all your farmers are busy, those that are diversified and in the cattle business too, they're not going to be in the calf market yet. And, uh, you know, farmers like to farm. That's, that's their main deal. They love it. And uh, you're not going to pull them uh, off of that tractor combine uh, to go out there and uh, take care of some calves, guys, especially some ball and high risk calves. They will not do it. They're not interested in it. Most of your uh, Northern Plains and Midwestern farmers that uh, farm or feed or background, they're going to wait until those cattle have had a hard freeze on them or maybe even until the new year. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, they're just not going to be in the market for them. And your Southern Plains uh, farmers are the same way. Uh, they'd be more apt to take them than the guys up north. But they want to get that wheat planted. They want this dust to settle. Uh, they want the, the weather to get more consistently cold uh, or at least cool before they start doing it. They don't want 90 degree days and 30 degree nights, guys. Uh, so uh, just light demand from farmers. We saw that starting out the week here. I don't have to think it had one thing to do with the cattle and feed report because it was absolutely neutral. Now the board was down a smidge, uh, but not really enough to to make a difference there so uh, but uh, we did see uh, a higher percentage of the runs in your Monday sales being calves and a very high percentage of them being balling unweaned calves which brings about light demand and there's there's pressure on your calf market uh, and and it's just going to be that way 
uh, until we get through October. I mean, October is rough trying to straighten up cattle. And, uh, and there's going to be weeks in there. And I think this week could be one of them. Uh, this week is ending in October, so we're going to say that it counts. But there is always at least one or two weeks in October that the supply outweighs demand. And I don't care how good the market is and how tight the supplies of all classes of cattle are. Uh, there's, there's weeks in October where there's more of them than people want. And uh, we're just now getting into the fall run and we're already seeing that. But uh, look at your board on Monday to start the week out. After that absolutely neutral cattle on feed report, we saw October live cattle futures down a dime at 186.97, really nothing. December was down 12 cents, 191.22, also nothing. And your back months were mixed from down 22 cents to up 35. But actually uh, very, very neutral or unchanged or steady there in your live cattle pits to start the week out on Monday. September feeder cattle were down 22 cents at 250.387, and they are getting right in there uh, like they always do at the end of the contract month. They are getting very close uh, to what our index values are, and they will meet up with those at the end of the month uh, because this is a, a, a contract month. They always do. October down 32 cents at 258.82. Your back months were also mixed on feeder cattle, down as much as 82 cents, which was your November contract, and up as much as a quarter, and that was the farthest traded month out. Look at your grains, uh, December new crop corn up four cents at 481 and a quarter. November new crop beans up one and a half at 12.97 and three quarter cent a bushel. Kansas City hard red winter wheat for December was up three and a quarter cent at 714 and a half. Talk about your weighted average on last week's negotiated fed cattle trade out of your five area feeding region, 69,800 head. Uh, I would like to see 100 in the five area, but uh, getting right up there close to 70,000 in your five area feeding region, that's about as good as we do anymore. We just, we just don't see much negotiated trade anymore. You compare that nearly 70,000 to the previous week, which was 60,400. But the same week a year ago, they, they traded 97,700 head. So we're getting to the time of year, you think they would trade quite a few, but uh, quite a few is just not nearly as many as it used to be. Live sales of fat steers and heifers in your five area feeding region last week ranged in price from 182 to 187. Only 414 head at the 182, only 734 at the 187. It was mostly 183 to 186. Uh, but uh, your weighted average on live steers in the five area feeding region was 184.73, up 69 cents, due largely to the Southern Plains trading steady to a buck higher at 183. Uh, the Northern Plains was mostly steady to firm. Uh, with most of your live prices at 185, most of your dressed at 292, and your dress spread ranged from 285 to 295. There was only 326 head at the 285, and then nothing all the way up to 288. So, uh, you know, really wasn't even fair to pull it, uh, the price range all the way down to 285, but there was 678 head at the 295, and your dress steer weighted average was 291.99 up 15 cents compared to the previous week so it was on the plus side nationwide they sold 87,200 head uh, the same week a year ago they sold 116,500 uh, nationwide so we're just continuing to fall behind uh, because we're pretty proud of the 87 too uh, when just a year ago was 116 and a half uh, thousand there but of that 87,200, about 23% of it was for the 15 to 30 day delivery, which is getting up there kind of close to steady with what they normally do. Uh, negotiated grid sales totaled up 50,500 head. Uh, forward contract sales, 34,800. And the formula sales with no price discovery, 271,400 head last week. 
Box beef cut out values uh, were kind of mixed, but mostly lower to start the week out. They just cannot seem to get any firm footing on this uh, box beef cut out value market here. Your choice cuts on Monday afternoon were down a buck eighty five at three oh one forty eight. Selects up just two cents at two eighty forty five. But your slaughter started out aggressive to start the week. Hundred and twenty seven thousand estimated for Monday. That's way bigger than what we normally see. I mean, I say we way bigger. It might be three to five thousand more. But to start the week out that aggressive, uh, that's a good sign there. Talk about what else is going on. Night Latch Group. Your livestock gross margin policies manage both cattle and corn risk for feedlot cattle. We realize LRPs are better for backgrounding cattle, but the LGM policies. Uh, can be used very effectively for feedlot cattle. Hold on to your investment. Go to nightlatch.net for more information. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction. Late in the day on Monday, sitting at 251.34, down 37 cents from the end of last week. So not terrible bad, but uh, sure enough, sure enough, a little bit weaker there. You talk about your big sales on Monday. Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City at 8,500 head. Uh, it was all lower for the most part. Feeder steers were steady to two bucks lower. Feeder heifers were two to four dollars lower. Steer calves four to eight bucks lower, with the exception of the peewee steer calves weighing under four and a half. They were about steady. Heifer calves ten to fifteen dollars lower, and big discounts noted for those calves that were unweaned. Even though the market's really good, you're still going to see huge discounts on them, guys. How about uh, Joplin Regional Stockyards, Carthage, Missouri, 6,600 head. Feeders were steady, uh, but not as well tested as the as the calves. But steer calves four to eight bucks lower. Heifer calves two to four dollars lower. Uh, the yearlings so good, I got to stick out sale on them. 93 head of yearling feeder steers weighed 8.46 and bring 255. I thought that was pretty impressive. And Joplin was your national beef wire stick out sale of the day. You want to see what the market is in the lower Midwest, guys. Here it is. Good tests on most all your weight groups. 479 head of four weight steers, 461 pounds on the weighted average, 273.27 weighted average price. 677 head of five weight steers, average 553 at 264.91. 658 head of six weight steers in Joplin, average 641 pounds and 262.92 on the weighted average price. 750 head of seven weight steers, average 752, weighted average price 255.74 and 946 head of eight weight steers. Averaged 846 at 245.13. Look at some heifer weight groups. 411 head of four weight heifers, averaged 450 right on the button, and 249.63 on the weighted average price. 731 head of five weight heifers, averaged 549 at 241.36, and 659 head of six weight heifers, Joplin Regional Stockyards, averaged 649. With a weighted average price of 239.43, give you some individual quotes from all around. How about Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction near Clinton, Oklahoma, right there on I-40? They sell 128 steers. They average 797 pounds, right at 800 pounds, at 257 on Monday. Impressive quote. How about Elgin Livestock Sales in Elgin, Nebraska? The Baum family there. 67 steers weighed 724 at 278.50. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Monday to start the week, your Macrosin no BS top quote for the day, come out of Bighorn Basin Livestock Auction in Warland, Wyoming. It was 59 steer calves, weighed 480 pounds and bring 336 and a quarter. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.